um, June twenty uh, seventh. So with that, um, if we could please call the roll. Councilmember Hussein. Councilmember Wood. Here. Councilmember Spatafore. Present. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Present. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Daniels. Present. Seven members present. You have a quorum of the committee. Thank you. We have a, a quorum, so we will begin. Uh, this is an opportunity for public comment on agenda items. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make um, public comment at this time? Seeing none, then we will move into our first presentation, and this is from our Capital Area District Library, their annual report. Pardon. Oh, the minutes. All right. I'm sorry. I skipped over the minutes. If you'll take a seat. Um, <laughs> Councilmember Spatafor. Madam Chair, I would move the uh, minutes from June 13, 2022. We have a motion on the minutes. Are there any questions or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. Now we will move into the presentation. This has been something that uh, the Capillary District Library has been doing annually. Council members, you have a uh, booklet that was passed out earlier in front of you, and we will turn it over to our friends from the library. Thank you. Thank you so much, council members. I am uh, Scott Dimes, Executive Director of Capillary District Libraries, and joining me is Melissa Cole. She is the head librarian of our Lansing Libraries, and also in the audience is our board chair, Jeff Croft, and a City of Lansing appointee, Brian Bayer. So you recently appointed him at one of your meetings, and he's a fantastic addition to uh, the Capillary District Library Board as well. So we do have the 2021 annual report, uh, which we're almost halfway through 2022, um, but uh, we just wanted to come and talk to you about some of the, uh, the impactful things that we did for our region and for the city of Lansing in 2021. Before I do that, I just have a brief commercial that in your packet is also a informational handout about uh, our ballot initiative on the August 2nd ballot, which is uh, the millage restore vote. So generally um, we have a millage renewal vote to uh, renew our uh, millage of 1.56 mills. Um, that millage rate was decreased in 2020 to 1.5567 mills and in 2021 to 1.5528 mills. This vote uh, restores that millage rate back up to 1.56 mills. For the average taxpayer in Ingham County, that's about $102 a year. If you are a library user, you easily make that back in checking out five to six items a year. Um, but also, if you are not a library user, um, you see the impact that, that we bring not only to our community, but to the business community, to the community at large, to area nonprofits, which you'll see all in our 2021 annual report. And I talked about um, getting that return on investment back by checking out five to six items a year. Uh, our residents uh, have done that and then some in 2021. We were at about 1.5 million items checked out uh, in 2021. That's huge. Kind of where City of Lansing residents were, um, they checked out about 400,000 items. And so those are physical items visiting libraries that Melissa is in charge of and also checking out items in our digital collection as well too. Those are students, those are adults, those are seniors, all using the library and all checking out items. We also, if you flip through that report, um, we couldn't do it without our community partners and we highlighted two of those community partners on page 11. You'll recognize two council members. Um, we actually honored um, council member Hussain and council member Garza uh, in at the end of the year as our library advocates of the year. Um, both council members have been instrumental in, in helping us with our South Lansing Library and then also bringing services to the uh, South Side of Lansing with a story walk that was put in at the South Side Community Coalition as well too. So it, it was a great chance for us to say our thanks uh, and also talk about some of the initiatives that we were doing in the city of Lansing as well too. But it wasn't all positive uh, in 2021 as well. Uh, we knew that members were coming back into the library, but we also saw that uh, a number of members were kind of priced out of the library as well. We did a, a study um, that found that about 13,000 individuals no longer use the library due to overdue fines. And if you remember, I came and talked to you last year that we were starting an initiative to go find free. We did that in 2021. 
Um, and it was a loss of revenue for us, but I, I feel that someone we shouldn't get revenue by someone being punished. Um, they're already paying for library services through their tax dollars. Um, so why should they have to pay again just to be in good graces with the library? So we accounted for that loss in revenue by recrease, decreasing some of our expenses. We got those individuals back to using the library, and a, and a number of people asked, how are you going to get your stuff back if you don't charge overdue fines? So what we did is we block someone's account if an item was 10 days or more overdue. That checks they allowed us to get our items back sooner than when we did charge overdue fines. So it's been a win-win for us to make the library more accessible for everyone, while also being good stewards of tax dollars and getting our items returned back on time. We also completed our work with the Student Success Initiative. That's having every student in the Ingham ISD school districts in our service area has access to library services. So they check out items or use our digital services just by using their student name or their student number. We partnered with Lansing School District in 2021 and we actually finalized the process with our last school district at the end of 2021 as well too. That's an initiative that we're very proud of, but we know it's not just checking out items, it's actual access to the internet as well too. So you'll see in this packet that, that we started an initiative for extended loan hotspots for some of those students. And that has been truly impactful. The way that they came about is we had ex hot spots that you could check out for students. They became overdue. We actually had to turn the service off to get the items back. Rather than say, same on you students, why don't you return our stuff? We said, if you really need it for that long, work with us and we'll try to get you hot spots that you can use for an extended period of time. So we worked with the schools to identify families in need and got them what we call extended loan hotspots that they can use for their schoolwork at home just by checking out with their Student Success Initiative account. Um, we have a number of strong partnerships that we continued in 2021 as well too. One of those was a continued partnership with the Ingham County Police Department with a program called Connections and Corrections. What that is, is we had to pause it during the pandemic, but we actually brought it back in 2021. Uh, we work with the Ingham County Jail, um, help identify inmates who have children uh, who are under the age of five what we do is we provide the inmate with a copy of a book. They read the book. We give a copy of the book and that recording to their children or their grandchildren. The stories that we hear from this are truly impactful. It's a way to make a connection through the early literacy skills for their parent or their grandparent. Even though they're incarcerated, they can still play a very active role in their child's literacy journey. It's a program we're very proud of, and it's one that we were able to bring back in 2021 as well, too. So before I turn it over to Melissa, I just want to end by saying 2022 is, is ramping up to be a very big year for us. We're, we're back to normal in our services. We're also planning a small renovation for our foster library at the end of this year or into next year. We're also planning to build more story walks like we have on the, on the community south side throughout the city of Lansing as well, too. So with that, to talk more about what the Lansing Libraries are doing, I'll turn it over to Head Librarian Melissa Cole. Hello. Um, so in 2021, we started with limited service, and as 2021 proceeded, we uh, began to open up more. If we could have you move oh. the mic a little bit closer. I'm for sorry. You. That's good. Can you Thank hear you. me now? <laughs> um, we started to open up more, um, and we started to, you know, find our new normal and offer more services. Um, we started back uh, with in-person story times, which were successful. Um, and we had uh, um, two authors in October at downtown. And we also, um, for the first time since early 2020, we had um, some magicians, some performers come in October, and it was very successful at downtown and South Lansing. Um, we also started to re-engage with the community, with community organizations and businesses, and um, had many successful partnerships in 2021. Um, we worked with Helping Women, period. Um, we partnered with them to bring menstrual hygiene products, product machines to downtown and South Lansing. These machines provide free um, menstrual hygiene products to anyone who, need it, who needs it. We also opened up, um, at that time, our, our community closet at downtown, which is in the basement, and it has um, hygiene products for anybody who needs them. So we stock that closet with hygiene products. They can go downstairs, open it, and grab whatever they need. Um, we also partnered with um, the Greater Lansing Food Bank to start um, providing food packs for patrons. Um, it's been very successful in the Lansing um, community. Um, I had to I had to take the serve safe test for food handlers so that <laughs> so that we could do that at the Lansing branches. Um, and and 
we hand out a lot of food. So there is a huge need in the community. Um, I, I also bought like those uh, military little uh, can openers so that you know our homeless population could still access the food because some of it's in cans so they can't like op they don't have can openers and we we also offer offer utensils as well um as scott mentioned we did the beacon park story walk in south lansing um we worked with parks lansing parks and recreation and the south side community coalition to install the the story walk it's it's really beautiful it's nice the the new walking path there is nice and i encourage you to check it out if you have not um, we also opened Foster Labs. Um, that was a long, uh, long time coming. <laughs> we started in 2019, but because of the pandemic, it, it was delayed, but we were able to open in 2021 in November. Foster Labs is a partnership between the City of Lansing and Capital Area District Libraries. Um, we gained access to the space in um, summer. It's the two rooms that are vacated um, by iTech. Um, and the uh, city asked us to provide similar programming. Um, so we did. We went in at the end of summer and, um, and I had my librarians paint, which you know some of them had, yeah, some of them have never painted before, so that took a long time. So um, <laughs> and then I had my mom come in and redo it all. Um, and, and we created signage, we filled it with tech. And um, we've started offering programming. So we have drop-in computer time that the community come in and use the computers. Um, we offer um, Microsoft Office and Google classes, Breaker Space, Minecraft Mondays. We do af after-school programming there. Um, we, you know, work with after-school program for um, Foster Community Center. Um, it's a it's a really exciting space, and I'm super excited to see the different things that we do with it. Um, we have one side that's a lab and one side that's a, a STEAM lab. So I, I encourage you to come see it. You can reach out to me if you want a little tour. Um, we also completed the, our stage at downtown and um, that was sponsored by Fox 47. Um, in the children's area, we have a stage. Cameron Zavara, a magician, was the first one to use it this year. It worked beautifully. Um, we decided to put a stage in our children's area because um, it, it's more family friendly. It's right there. People can see it. Um, that we're not sending people to the basement anymore. And, and, and when it's not a stage, it's a play area for kids. Um, and it engages them in um, you know, early literacy activities. It's set up like a news station so they can play like with the map and the weather and they can pretend like they're um, doing the news. It's, it's really cute. And and we've been working on our children's area, improving our children's area at downtown for a while. Um, we're also hoping to put in a baby toddler room um, sometime this year. Um, and I, this is my, 2021 was my first year um, as head of Foster. And we made lots and lots of changes. We spent the first three months, you know, cleaning it out and getting rid of things and redoing it. And, and I brought in a team of staff. I mean, it looks great. We did a good job, I think, um, getting it ready for its potential mm -hmm. um, renovation. If you haven't been there, I hope you can come and look at it as well. Um, and I was told that um, there was interest in our summer reading programming. Um, so at the Lansing branches this summer, we are doing the Eat Up and Meet Up, which we hadn't done since 2019. We're offering lunches at the South Lansing and the downtown branch for um, uh, kids and parents and their caregivers. Um, we also do a movie with that, and um, we have programming performers right before, so they can come for the, the performer and then stay for lunch. Um, and then we have planned movies as well. Um, we have our story times. Uh, we have, I did a full summer of performers, because um, I am super ready for families to come back to the library. <laughs> we have magicians, we have jugglers, we have um, puppets, we have everything. Um, included in your um, in your annual report is this is our the Lansing Branches Summer Programming Guide. Um, we're also working with Red Cedar Writing Project on a couple um, prog programs that focus on local history and focus on storytelling. Um, and I, I mean, I could talk all day about everything that we have to offer. We still offer some virtual programs. We have D and D. Um, virtually, which has been very popular. We still offer take and makes. We have um, Smash Brothers tournaments, drop-in steam, sensory-friendly movies. 
So, and, and I hope you check it out. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I think that's about it. Are there any questions from council members at this time? I don't see any. I do want to thank the library system. Um, you worked with RSVP and our seniors to mm -hmm. do some Chromebook um, teaching. And we had seniors that had um, never worked on a computer before or a Chromebook. And um, with the help of your staff, we ended up putting together um, some material that they were able to utilize and have slowly but surely gotten familiar with the Chromebooks and are using them on a more regular basis. So we do want to thank you oh, for, thank you. for mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Love it. Uh, Council Member Jackson. Thank you. I did have a question about the program where the incarcerated people read the books. So which facility do you guys operate out of and how do you get those referrals? Sure. So it's we work with Sheriff Riggle, Rigglesworth and in, in the Ingham County Jail. And so there's a contact person um, that we work with to set up those appointments and then they're usually regularly scheduled appointments and and we go from there based on um, um, the inmates that they kind of refer to the program as well yep this is a, I, I can't remember the year we started it but this has to be like the third or fourth year that we've been doing it although we did take a pause during the pandemic okay anything else we want to thank you for coming down and sharing um, all the information that you have with us. And uh, we wish you a successful year. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us into uh, discussion and action items. Um, the first item that we have is the readoption of the codified um, ordinances. We did have a public hearing on this. And so what this would do is to approve the adoption for council action um, this evening. Um, I would turn it over to Council Member Spadafore. Um, Madam Chair, I would move the ordinance, readopting the codified ordinances and just further explain we do this on an annual basis to avoid the lapsing of our ordinances that don't have particularly effective dates. All right, thank you. Are there any questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next, we have before us is um, the FY 2021-22 20, uh, year-end um, budget amendment, and this has to do with the vacancy um, factor distribution. So with that, if we could have you come forward. This is something that we do annually um, at the before the close of books um, with our um, fiscal year, and that's coming to a close on the 30th. So um, this will be the allocation of those vacancy dollars. So if you could go through that with us. Is this on? So as Councilor Member Wood said, this is done at the end of every fiscal year. So um, the vacancy factor is calculated citywide and then allocated to different departments um, proportionally among departments to leave them uh, as much room as possible. So the total vacancy factor amount was 1.4 million. And then that was allocated proportionally based on what percentage each department uh, made up of the total vacancy factor. So. If you look at the resolution you have in front of you, it only affects personnel, no operating costs, and it's um, these amounts in each department will total that 1.4 million vacancy factor at the end. Um, and we're happy to take any questions. Are there any questions on this? Seeing none, Council Member Spadafore. Madam Chair, I'd move the resolution for the year end budget amendments dealing with the city vacancy. Okay, we have a motion on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Now this will be on the agenda this evening. This is a six vote item. So we need to be cognizant of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to closed session. And Council Member Spadafore. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Pursuant to MCL 15.268 sub E, I hereby move that we recess into closed session to consult with the city attorney in connection with the following specific pending litigation. An open meeting will have a detrimental of financial effect on the litiga litigating or settlement position of the city of Lansing concerning the following cases. Atkinson et al. v. City of Lansing et al. Burwell v. City of Lansing et al. Career Quest Learning Centers, Inc. and Little Rainbows, LLC v. City of Lansing Lansing City Treasurer et al., Chen v. City of Lansing et al., City of Lansing v. Fady Inc. et al., City of Lansing v. OCOF Nonprofit Housing Corp., City of Lansing et al. v. Purdue Pharma et al., Opioid Litigation, Fire Farm LLC v. City of Lansing, Freeman v. City of Lansing, Hardy v. City of Lansing et al., Hulan v. City of Lansing et al., Lamb v. City of Lansing, Lynn v. City of Lansing, OPV Partners, LLC, and Resco, LLC v. City of Lansing, Overstrom v. City of Lansing, Phillips v. City of Lansing et al., Stafford v. Klein and City of Lansing, Taylor v. City of Lansing et al., Wasp v. H&H, Mobile et al., and finally, McLaren v. City of Lansing. And with that, this roll call vote, and again, we need six to go into closed session. Councilmember Spadafore. Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Brown? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? No. Councilmember Garza? Yes. Councilmember Daniels? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Motion carries 6-1. At this time, we will uh, recess and go into closed session. Our meeting is back in order, and at this time we are recessed until 7 um, p.m. for the uh, council meeting. Thank you.